This chapter will focus on creating a virtual table from a stored procedure, or for short, a SPROC. Note that it is assumed that you are familiar with SQL SPROCs and understand the data results set returned. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will use a Microsoft SQL Server SPROC. However, similar steps would apply to other SQL databases that support SPROCs as well, including Oracle and MySQL. The sample data that we'll be using in this tutorial is derived from our sample database called Synatica 2010. There are predefined store procedures within this database that we will use for this tutorial. Before we can get started, we need to create a virtual table called products and you'll see why later. This is a good opportunity to show how to promote a table from a data source to a virtual table as well. Go to data connectors in the design explorer and expand the data connector called 2.1.1 which was created in a previous tutorial. Next, expand the tables. Look for a table called products. Open the context menu for it and click the create virtual table menu item. A virtual table called products will now be created. Expand the virtual tables in the design explorer. Check in the products table so it will be available for use. We can now get back to creating a virtual table from a SPROC. Let's start off by going to the design explorer and clicking on the virtual tables context menu. Next, click on the new virtual table menu item to create a new virtual table. Type in a meaningful name for the virtual table. We're going to use 2.2.2 so it's easy to associate this tutorial with this virtual table for future reference. The setup wizard will appear. Choose virtual table based on a stored procedure or function. Click next to continue. You will now be prompted to select the data connector. Choose 2.1.1 as your data connector. Remember that this is the data connection to our Synatica 2010 database. Click next to continue. You will now be prompted to select the data structure. Select the Get Sales for Product Store Procedure by clicking on the checkbox. Press the Finish button to complete the wizard. Let's navigate to the Preview tab so we can get a look at the data being returned. This particular store procedure takes a product ID as a parameter. As we mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, it is important to know how the SPROC is defined. In our case, we need to be familiar with the product IDs available and we need to know that the data results set will return the sales data for that particular product. We have to set up the parameter to get some data back. Let's go ahead and open the setup wizard for the parameters by clicking here. Select public so we can expose the parameter to those tasked with building business metrics. This gives them the ability to apply filters to business metrics based on this virtual table. You can change the dashboard label text box to something else, but we're going to leave it. Feel free to add a description of the parameter in the text box as well. Let's ignore the no allowed for value selection for now. Click next to move on. The next step needs a bit of a backdrop. In some cases, store procedures take in numeric IDs as parameters. These IDs can generally be found in a lookup table in the database. To make building business metrics easier, you can set up the lookup table here and set a default value for the parameter using this lookup table. Now that we have put this step in context, let's go ahead and set it up. For this store procedure, the parameter is the product ID and it does have a lookup table in the database called products that we created earlier in this tutorial. Let's link it up by clicking here and choosing the products table. Press OK to finish this up. You will now see a list of value name pairs in the grid. The value is usually the ID and the name is a friendly name of the value. In this case, the value is the product ID and the name is the SKU. The list of available choices for the parameter can also be sorted by name or by value, but it is arbitrary. Finally, let's set up a default value by clicking here and choosing from the list. Let's pick value 2 for our purposes. Click OK to save the setting. Let's proceed to the next step. The next screen addresses security on the parameter values available. We won't set a rule here, but the idea is you would restrict any parameter values you feel is inappropriate for the business metric to be filtered by. For example, we may want to restrict access to product ID 2 because that information is restricted to C-level management. Click Finish to close the wizard. Now, click here to make sure the expected results set is returned. In our case, we were successful and the data is correct. Let's click the Check-in button to save our work and have the virtual table available to be made into a business metric. You have now successfully created a virtual table from a SPROC. This concludes our tutorial in creating a virtual table from a stored procedure.